What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool twisted building shape uh, in Revit. Uh, so this was uh, asked by one of my website subscribers uh, and he wanted to know how to create this horizontal building which is, well, twisted. And I thought it might be a good, a, a good topic for a tutorial, uh, it's not something that's quite common and I think it looks really cool uh, and I didn't really see anybody covering this topic, so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. Uh, now speaking of my website, uh, if you want to learn more about creating complex shapes like this, uh, all of them are made in the massing environment within Revit and I actually have a whole dedicated course uh, where I explain how to use the massing environment in Revit and how to create all of these different complex shapes all within Revit and how to then turn that into actual buildings. Uh, now this course is available on my website balkanarchitect.com that's going to be the first link just below this video so check it out if you're interested in learning something like that. Uh, and also please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel I make useful Revit tutorials each week and make sure to like this video well because it helps promote the video to other other people that might want to see it. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let us get started by going here to Models, then I'm going to go to New. Uh, and for the template file, I'm just going to choose my own custom Balkan Arctic template, the metric version. And if you're interested in checking out my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That's going to be the third link in the description. Anyways, let's just click OK and that's going to start our new project. Uh, now for this project, this is obviously going to be uh, modeled in the masking environment. So for that, we have to create our in-place mass. So to do something like that, uh, what we need to do is go here to the massing and site tab. There we have the show mass option and we want to turn that on uh, because when we model our mass, we want to be able to see it. So Revit has to show that to us. Uh, the next step is to go to in place mass. It's going to ask us how do we want to call this. I'm just going to leave it as mass one. Feel free to name it as whatever you want. Uh, so for this, I like to get started by simply going here to the model lines and then creating a rectangle that's going to kind of imitate the uh, outside perimeter of this building. Uh, now keep in mind that this is just going to be deleted later on, but I need it for now just to kind of get started. So let's make it, I don't know, 38 meters long and 6 meters wide. Click the escape key a couple of times. I'm going to select it and, and try to center it a little bit on this uh, in between all of the elevation symbols. Anyways, uh, once we have this, I want to add some reference planes and then we're going to be using those reference planes to host the lines and then those lines are going to be swept into the shape. Now, if that doesn't make too much sense, don't worry about it. As we do it, you will understand the process. Uh, so I'm just going to go here to the reference plane tool, click, and then let's go here to the midpoint, go down, hit the escape key a couple of times, select that again, go up, like so. Uh, and now we obviously want to copy this. So I'm just going to go here, select that, go to the copy. CO is the shortcut. Uh, you can copy it multiple times. So I'm just going to select it here, uh, go out. Mm -hmm. Let's go up to here, perhaps like this five meters out. And then let's copy it once again at one meter, like so. Now that I think about it, perhaps we can go out a little bit further. So I just selected both of them and I'm using the arrow keys just to go out a little. Hmm, yeah, perhaps this would work. Okay, uh, and finally, let's select one of these and go again to the copy tool. So CO is the shortcut and just copy it all the way to the edge. Did I get the edge? Okay, I did. Uh, now I want to select these two and I want to mirror this on the other side or these three. Uh, so for that, you go here to the modify panel, uh, you find the mirror pick access, and then you just pick the middle line like so. Uh, finally, let's go to the reference plane tool. Again, uh, go here to this point and just create a couple of reference planes like this. So this general shape just help us, helped us initially and now we obviously don't need it anymore. So you can just hit delete if you want. Okay, so once we have that in place, I want to name uh, all of these reference planes. So I'm just going to select the center one 
click here and then let's just call it C for center. Next, I'm just going to go from this side to this side and just add the <coughs> add numbers for each of them. So this will be number one. This shall be number two. This will be number three. Uh, this is number four, uh, number five. And finally, yeah, you guessed it. This one is number six. Uh, now, once we have all uh, of them named, now it's time to start creating our shape or actually start creating the profiles for our shape. So what you want to do is go here to the uh, east elevation. So we cannot click here because we're in the masking environment. So what you want to do is go to the project browser uh, find the east elevation, just double click, and it's going to look like this. Uh, now here you want to add one more reference plane because I want this kind of profile of the building or the section of the building uh, to be uh, rectangular. So I will have to move my level up a little bit. Uh, and I, I want it to be at six meters or that doesn't have to be the level, that's just going to be the roof line. Uh, so for that, I'm just going to use another reference plane like so and just add one here above. Uh, select that and then let's measure uh, from all the way down make it six meters just like so perfect okay so the next step is to start adding some lines for the profiles so you want to go here to the uh, line tool so model line and it's going to ask you to pick a work plane now you want to pick it by name and because we have named those let's go with reference plane number one so that's the one all the way on the other side click ok Go here from the bottom and before you click, make sure to go here and find uh, the drawn face and instead of drawn face, check drawn work plane. See, now this one will be highlighted and you want to keep it there so it doesn't mess anything up. Again, you can just double check that it's at reference plane one. Perfect. Go from the bottom and then go all the way to the intersection of these two reference planes, just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times and now if I were to go to the 3D view, we just have that one line kind of in space there. Uh, now you just want to select that line and I'm going to show you a cool little trick. How can you copy that line uh, so it's over here and at this point and I want to copy it from here to here to here. So I want three of those here. So you just go to the 3D view, you select the line, you then go to the clipboard, you go to copy to clipboard, you go to paste and then you just go align to the same place. Now, once it's copied, it's obviously overlapping with the existing line. And now you just want to change its reference plane. So it's still selected. The new one is selected. And then you just go here to host and change it from reference plane one to reference plane two. And here it is. So it has been copied here or moved to be exact. Next, you go again to paste, align to the same place. Again, it's going to overlap it with this one. It's still selected. Go to the host reference plane number three, and now it's over here. Perfect. And then finally, let's go to the east elevation. Uh, go again to the line tool. Again, go to draw and work plane, go to the reference plane, and then you want to pick reference plane number four. Uh, now, you want to zoom in here, find the kind of uh, end point here, and go from there up to here, up to this intersection. Perfect. Also, one thing to note is that always 3D snapping shall be off for doing all of this. So just make sure to keep it off. Okay, go to the 3D view. It looks like this. Again, we're going to select that and go to copy, paste, align to the same place, go to the reference plane and then move it to number five, like so. Again, paste, align to the same place, reference plane, go to six. Okay, so we have all of these and now we have to connect them together. Now, if we were to connect them like this and then create form, it might look a little bit odd. Actually, I wouldn't be happy with this at all. Let's try going to shade it. Yeah, that's not going to help. Yeah, it would look like this, which might be okay for you. Uh, it might not be okay. So uh, this might work for your project. But if I were to just open this image up, See, when you look at it here, it obviously kind of wraps around and goes up. So we obviously want to do this a little bit differently. So this will not work. So let's go back. Let's go back again. There we go. So this is where we have that center line. And this is where that center line is important. So you want to go again to the east elevation. You want to go to the work plane and add another work plane, perhaps at one 
0.5 meters above, just like so. Hit the escape key a couple of times, go to the line, and then make sure that the reference plane is set to reference plane C for center. Then you want to go from one edge to the other just to find the midpoint, and then go to the, from the midpoint up and then go down at a 45 degree angle and make sure that the length is at six meters, just like so. Select that line by hitting the tab key to just highlight this one. Uh, then you want to go to the mirror, pick access, mirror around there, there we go. Then you want to again use the tab key to select this line, hit delete, select this line, hit delete. And in the end, this is what we get. Okay, now you select the first three here. You hold the control key. See how we get that little plus sign next to our cursor. Uh, now you hold the control key, you select this, and then you also want to select just one of these lines, this one here. So you hover over it, you hit the tab key once to highlight only one line, you hold the control key, and then you add that to the selection as well. Finally, you just go here to create form, click, and now the form looks like this, and it's much better. And as you can see, now it goes up a little bit when we look at it from the side. It goes up a little bit, and that's exactly what we have on this image here. So that's why we added that line in the middle. Uh, now to copy to the other side, actually that's quite a simpler process because we can just go and uh, select this shape, just like that. Go to the east elevation, and I forgot something. So <laughs> here in the east elevation, let's go to the line. Uh, you wanna go to the reference plane C for center, go from one corner all the way to the other, like that, perfect. And now again, you go back to the 3D view, you select the entire shape like that. You go back to the east elevation. So I, I'm just using the tab key to highlight the entire shape. Uh, you go to the east elevation, uh, you go to the rotate tool, you check copy, you place the center of rotation here in the center of this, or the midpoint of this diagonal line that we have created. And you just go from the top point here down like that. Perfect. You go to the 3D view and just check it out. Uh, now here, uh, for some reason, we don't really have over a perfect overlap, or it might look a little bit odd. You see how it kind of opens up there in the middle? But don't worry about that. We can actually fix that. So here, what we need to do is just select this line, find the midpoint, like the, uh, find this point here. So you just hover over it, you click, then you select that point and then you can just drag it out to match this point here. And I would do the same thing on the other side. So you just hover over this, find that point, and then you just use this arrow to kind of move it in a little bit. And there we go, perfect. Now we can just delete this line here, delete this line here, and we have that perfect shape. Now we can finally just go to finish mass. Uh, then you can go to architecture, go to or sorry, go to massing and site. Now you might be tempted to use a roof. It's not going to work because we have vertical lines and roofs uh, don't work with vertical lines for some reason. So you wanna go to a wall, you go to pick face, uh, you choose, uh, let's go with uh, this one. And then we choose this one, this one, and that's what we get. Now this one is up instead of down, so finish face, let's go to interior. Yeah, and that's going to move it in. And for this one, yeah, I think it looks good. There we go, so we have that very complex shape, but it was fairly easy to create that in Revit, and we have quite an interesting building that wasn't too difficult to create. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Uh, if you want to learn more about advanced massing in Revit, I suggest you check out my course on the massing environment in Revit. It's available on my website, and I am going to include the link to that, uh, the first link in the description. So check it out just below the video. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions and I'll be back with another Balkan Arctic tutorial in a few days. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.